Today, we've thrown stones at the US and Canada. That's good. Uh, Europe in general, Russia. We look at what's going on in Turkey. I'm, I'm quite bullish on Turkey in general. Um, you know, we're doing our Turkish citizenship by investment. Um, we're buying a property in Turkey. I see some really good plays there. And then basically, Southeast Asia is completely out right now for a place to live. I mean, I've traveled all over Africa. I've not found places that would really speak to me as being an expat hotspot. Maybe for some people it is, that's amazing. Um, I have not found that myself. For me, it's Latin America. Latin America seems mm -hmm. to be the only place to go in the world right now where you actually have a, a semblance of normalcy, um, where this woke agenda is not going rampant throughout the countries. You're still talking about food independent, water independent countries. And if there is a nuclear war in the world, I'd be looking down at Southern Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, this type of breadbasket area of planet Earth as, as the, the last safe harbor anywhere. Yeah, and they, they're, they're staying out of the whole Ukraine thing. You know, the U.S. is trying to convince a lot of those countries to send weapons, but they're not doing it, uh, which is good. So, yeah, that's true. Like, if you think about geographically, a good place to be, I would say you're probably right down there, uh, Latin America, South South America. And these you know, countries are friendly with each other as well. Like, I mm -hmm. talk to, I have... Um, uh, Argentinian friends and stuff like that. And they know that I love Uruguay and I go back and forth to Uruguay and stuff. They're like, yeah, Uruguay is like our little brother. We love them. You know, they, they uh, make fun of each other about the football and stuff because Uruguay's won so many times the world cup, but it's like, it doesn't have these types of tensions. When you get down to Latin America, the, the border tensions are not like they are in Europe or in some of these other regions in the world. They just don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't spent any time down there. I gotta. I've traveled pretty good, uh, like all around Europe, and been to China, Cambodia, Singapore, Australia. We did that trip. My wife's Australian, so we actually we're gonna go there. The plan was to go there once a year, but then COVID happened, and and go there once a year and stop somewhere in Asia on the way because you know I really want to go to Japan and more places in Southeast Asia. Um, so we're gonna try to get that going again um how's australia been handling things from the anti-war side of things are they they stick in their finger in everyone's eye as well well yeah i mean the australian government is going along they just signed this AUKUS deal with the u.s and, and the uk pretty recently that's going to give them nuclear powered submarines and they're not going to get them for like a decade at least but that's basically you know putting them on the side of the u.s in a potential future war over china because the u.s idea is to turn australia into kind of like a submarine hub like where they can repair and maintain all their submarines for use against in this war against china and the u.s part of that deal too the u.s is going to be sending more uh planes over there and bombers and troops so but it seems like there's more there's a big conversation going on within australia of like should we you know if there's a war over taiwan should we be involved uh so i think that's still being worked out but for the most part it seems like they're going along with it uh, which is unfortunate because um, they're, you know, China's their biggest trading partner. China kind of went after Australia, which was interesting. So when the U.S. brought the Quad back, which is the Quad is India, Japan, Australia, and the U.S. And it was started in the early 2000s, but India and Australia didn't want to go along because they didn't want to stoke tensions with China because it's basically like an anti-China uh, It's a foundation for like an anti-China military alliance in the region. But in recent years, they started doing drills again. And that was uh, seemed like a lot of the tensions between China and Australia on the trade front stemmed from that. They kind of went, picked Australia because they were the country that they could go after. Uh, so I think that explains a lot of the tensions. So, yeah, Australia, um, they'll probably be, you know, if there is a war, they're definitely going to be involved, I think, at this point. I lived in Australia from 2006 to 2009. In that country, it seems like every three months they change their prime minister, change the president. Like, it's yeah, just, they they just <laughs> it's like I never have any idea what's going on over there. I, well, I there is used that... to love Australia, but that's yeah. watching what they've done during COVID over the last couple of years is just absolutely yeah, that put a really sour bad. taste in my mind, in my mouth. Yeah, I spent about a month there. Uh, it was in 2020 before the COVID though, it was January, 2020 and it was awesome. But then when we got back home and COVID hit, you know, they did all that, but we'll definitely go back. But I was actually thinking about moving there at the time because my wife, again, she is the citizenship. So it would be easy for us, but 
And I saw some spiders that were like, you know, this big. And I said, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I lived in Melbourne. We didn't see any spiders like that. But yeah. now it's just it's just crazy. All of these countries who are just jumping on the bandwagon, like Australia, like what do you have? Why do you have any skin in the game in Ukraine and China? I mean, yeah, like WA, like um, Western Australia is all about mining. It's mm -hmm. all natural resources and they're shipping natural resources over to China all day long, every day. And now you want to go to war with them? Like, do you guys thinking this through? This is, sounds like a terrible idea. And as going back to our point about Scandinavia, you have an 800 kilometer border and now you want to have uh, troops stationed there and nuclear warheads there. Like, you think that that's a good idea? That's going to protect you? That's not going to protect you. That's going to make you a massive target. Stay out of it. Just everybody, just stay out of it. Yeah, I don't get why that's not more appealing to some of these governments is, is neutrality. You know, it prevented some countries in Europe from being destroyed, you know, during the world wars. And yeah, especially geographically, like Australia, it's just there's no need for them to be involved. They trade with China. There's that, I forget which, it was like an Australian show, I think. I forget what it was called, but it's some comedy show. And they had, you know, this, these generals in a room like, oh, we need to, you know, increase our presence in the South China Sea to protect our trade routes. And they're like, so we need to protect our trade from, you know, we ha have to protect our trade from China, but, but we trade with China. So it's like you're protecting the shipping channels that from China, but you're buying all your stuff and selling all your stuff to China. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And that's kind of the talking point that if China takes control of the South China Sea, they're going to shut it down for international trade, but China's completely reliant on, you know, selling things. And it's just, you know, it just doesn't make much sense to me. And that's another thing I know in Australia is the propaganda is crazy. If you look at any Australian media, especially Australian, like 60 minutes, it's just, you know, war with China is all they're talking about. Um, so they're really getting it pretty bad over there. Well, because I work in the offshore markets and I deal with a lot of the tax things, Australia has just branded anywhere that has no tax as just like evil, horrible Satan worshippers. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's crazy. And the propaganda is, is very strong there on many fronts, not just on mm -hmm. the war hawkish side of things, but, uh, but on many, many fronts.